Hello guys, welcome back, PK here. So in this video, we're going to do this interesting complex equation using Lambert W functions, so stay tuned. Okay, here's an interesting complex equation. The question is solve for all the z, that is complex numbers, pi minus ln of e times z is equal to z to the power of i. We'll be solving this using Lambert W function. So first of all, our equation could be rewritten as z um, to the power of i. Okay, then plus ln of, now then the e times z. That is just equal to pi, right? Okay, then the left hand side has to be the same as z to the power of i plus, now if you work this part out, it has to be ln of e. Okay, then that plus ln z, that is equal to pi. Since ln of e is equal to 1, right? So we can rewrite this equation as z to the power of i. Okay, then that plus ln z. This is equal to, move this one to the right hand side, and we have pi minus 1. Okay, then let's apply this e to the base of the left and right hand side, right? So then left hand side has to be then the e to the power of z to the power of i plus ln z. That is equal to e to the power of pi minus 1. Okay, so the left hand side is the same as e to the power of z to the power of i times e to the power of ln z. That is equal to e to the power of pi minus 1. Okay, then this is going to be the same as then, since e to the power of ln z is equal to z. So this is the same as z times e to the power of z to the power of i. This is e to the power of pi minus 1. All we are doing is to make the Lambert W function form, right? Okay, so now I'll be raising the left and the right hand side to the power of i. Okay, then it looks like the left hand side is going to be z to the power of i times now e to the power of i times z to the power of i. That is now equal to e to the power of i times pi minus 1. That is on the right hand side. Okay, so from this, e to the power of, now i, times pi minus 1. Okay, this is then going to be equal to e to the power of i pi, and then that times e to the power of negative i. But then again, we can use this e to the power of i pi plus 1 is equal to 0. So that e to the power of i pi is negative 1. Okay, so that's why now we can rewrite this everything as now e to the power of negative i times pi minus 1. This is the same as now that the negative e to the power of negative i. Okay, so let's use this to rewrite your equation. The equation has to be then z to the power of i. Okay, then that times now e to the power of i times z to the power of i. Okay, then that is equal to this negative e to the power of negative i. Okay, so rewrite this for one more time. This has to be the same as if you multiply i to both the left and the right hand side, then we have i times z to the power of i times e to the power of i, z to the power of i. This is equal to negative i times e to the power of negative i. We can now use Lambert W function form. That is the form of, okay, so, okay. So that's why now we can say um, i times z to the power of i. This has to be the same as a lambda w0 of negative i e to the power of negative i. That has to be equal to just the negative i then, right? Okay, so that's why now this i times z to the power of i. Okay, this has to be equal to just the negative i, right? So which means 
Now the z to the power of i. Z to the power of i has to be if you divide both sides by the i, right? Then the z to the power of i has to be negative i over i, which is equal to just a negative one. So we can talk about the expression for the z, right? So your z is then going to be equal to negative one to the power of negative i. And then we'll be using the z that has negative one to the power of negative i, right? So since z was negative one to the power of negative i, let's rewrite this. So the z was negative one to the power of negative i. Okay, so we can rewrite this as now then the e to the power of everything, right? e to the power of negative i times now ln of negative 1. Okay, then this is going to be the same as e to the power of negative i. And then that times now i pi, which is ln of negative 1. Okay, so that is why now the z is simply now equal to um, e to the power of negative i times i pi. That is going to be just equal to e to the power of negative i times i is positive 1. So e to the power of just a pi. This is going to be the answer for the question. Um, and then we can actually check the answer by working on, first of all, the equation. Pi minus ln of e times z is equal to z to the power of i. So the left-hand side, let's plug it in this e to the power of pi, right, to the z on the left-hand side. So the left-hand side, let's plug it in e to the power of pi to the z, right? Then it has to be, now then the pi minus ln of e times e to the power of pi. Okay, then this has to be the same as pi minus ln of e to the power of pi plus 1. Okay, so that's why this has to be the same as pi minus pi plus 1, which has to be negative 1. So the left side turns out to be negative 1 if you plug it in e to the power of pi to the z, right? Then at the same time, the right hand side was now z to the power of i. Okay, so we already have this z as e to the power of pi, right? So e to the power of pi to the power of the i. This is e to the power of pi i. We already know this is equal to negative 1, right? So that is why the left and the right hand side, they're both negative 1. So we got the right answer as e to the power of pi. Okay, so pretty interesting complex equations. So I'll be back more if there's more questions like this sometime soon.